Hey everybody, it's Josh here again. Welcome back to my channel. I do a lot of videos on cybersecurity, IT, and career type things. And we're just going to be doing a continuation of the cybersecurity interview questions kind of series that I've been doing. So if you find these useful, uh, please, you know, consider liking and subscribing. It helps out the channel a lot. I'm open to recommendations too. Um, but yeah, anyway, on to the next question. And this this question's actually like a, a really good, like in-depth question that I, I actually had for one of my positions. It was like the security engineer near position um, at King County. So yeah, pay attention to this one. It's a, it's a pretty good one. So the question is, you have completed a risk assessment and you determined that it an identified vulnerability as high risk and requires a control to be implemented on a legacy system. The system administrator slash manager disagrees with your assessment. The system administrator believes the risk has been overstated and the risk is actually low due to be due to being on an internal not external facing as in not exposed to the internet uh, due to being on an internal system. Also, the mitigation strategy you recommended may impact their fragile but very important legacy system. You reassess the risk and still believe the risk is high. How do you proceed and how do you communicate? So the way I would approach this is since the vulnerable system seems to be on an, in, an internal portion of the network, it's possibly not at as much risk as something that's directly exposed to the internet. And it's kind of stated that the system is fragile and then patching it or kind of doing anything into it may impact like some kind of critical system. Um, so what I would do is instead of like really forcing the remediation of the vulnerability that we found, maybe come up with a plan to kind of address that in the future, whether that's like upgrading the infrastructure that it's on and getting rid of the vulnerability that way, or at least upgrading it enough to where we can remediate the vulnerability in the future without impacting production in some way. And in the meantime, since we can't fix it like right away, we could, I could, I would work with the system administrator to come up with some kind of compensating controls that is like a little bit of like extra security measures that we can implement now that won't impact production that will at least like mitigate risk to, to an acceptable level in the interim. That way I can, we can kind of meet half way with the system administrator like we we're not going to force remediation now but at the same time we're not just going to like leave it how it is we'd submit like a vulnerability exception for maybe like six months or three months depending on the vulnerability in the system and that time like come up with a plan to like properly address the issue in the meanwhile we'll have the kind of compensating controls in place so this is this is a really good question um because it, it's kind of a personality question to be honest because there's a lot of people in security that will just like they'll be like i don't care we're gonna fix fix the vulnerabilities right now. We're going to like fix everything and like patch it. But doing that, you have to realize you could effectively DOS the business, like do an inadvertent denial of service. Like if you bring down a critical system, you're like no better than, you know, a malicious actor who's like trying to trying to break things. So you, you kind of have to be cognizant of that and like kind of be aware of like what you're doing. Because as a security person, like your job is your job is to essentially like mitigate loss for the business. Like the business, you know, makes a certain amount of money and a certain amount of that is like lost due to like outages and like cyber attacks or something. And if you're the one like causing the outage, and like, why are you even there? You're just like a cost center that's like causing outages. It doesn't make sense. Um, at the same time, you know, you have to make sure that you fix stuff that's broken. So that's where the kind of compromise comes in. Sometimes you, it's kind of like, it's hard to say like for sure, like when to compromise, you just have to kind of talk it out with the admins or like production operations or, or whoever it is that's managing the actual hardware and kind of figure out like when you can't actually remediate something. And then when you can't, you have to figure out why and then come up with a plan to be able to remediate in the future. And then if it takes like, you know, six months to get to that time period, try to do like what you can to mitigate risk, you know, as much as you can, because you don't want to, you don't want to have a lot of risk. And you, you also don't want to like, you know, irritate production too much. You don't want to be like that hard ass security person who's just like really annoying. You know, you have to like be cognizant of the business and realize like things have to still function like true. Like you, they shouldn't be running server 2008 or whatever they're running, but um, you can't always just like fix that stuff immediately. So put compensating controls, come up with a plan to fix it in the future. And then when that time comes, just fix it and then kind of be tactful all along the way while you're dealing with, you know, whoever it is you're dealing with, like production engineers or whoever. But yeah, this is a good question. Um, there's other ways to answer it, of course. That's just how I answered it. And the way I kind of do security, like especially in local government, it's it's hard to change things in local government. And it's really, really hard to get people to do things. And this, in, this interview question was like a, a local government position. Um, so the way I ended up doing security there was just mitigate risk as much as as I possibly can without wasting too much time because this is like really unfortunate to say but it's kind of the reality some places like a lot of places just going to ignore you and like do whatever they want to do like at the end of the day and regardless of like how much your boss like advocates for you, you there's not 
much you can do sometimes. So I kind of take on the mindset in this scenario to just kind of mitigate risk as much as I possibly can without wasting too much of my time and without like pissing off too many people. Because in certain environments, when people are like mad at you or, you know, they, they don't like your department, it's just going to like make it even worse in the future. Uh, that's just like the reality of it. It's really unfortunate. I could talk about this forever, but this is we're supposed to be doing interview questions here. So uh, yeah, th this is a good question. Just pay attention to it and maybe try practice it, practice answering it in different ways. Um, but yeah. So the next question is describe a time when you were involved with a security incident slash breach. Describe the incident, how it was detected, your role regarding the incident and controls put in place to address it. So of course, a lot of ways to answer this. Um, I'm just going to answer this as if I've never worked in security and I've never worked in like a production thing where there's actual like production incidents. So I'll, I'll answer it um, in this way. So, you know, for those for those of you who are watching, you can kind of get some ideas how to like prepare for and answer this kind of question. So. I haven't worked in a, a cybersecurity job yet, but I'm pretty familiar with the incident response process. Um, I've studied NIST 861 a little bit, and I've taken the, the NIMS ICS 100 course to kind of get a better idea on how to handle incidents. So the incident that I was involved in uh, just was on my personal lab that I have in Azure. I kind of set up a little environment in Azure, and I exposed an endpoint to the internet on purpose just to kind of practice reading and reviewing logs and kind of simulate for myself what it's like to manage a system that's exposed to the internet. So basically on this system, it's just like a basic Windows 10 computer, but it has PowerShell logging and transcription en enabled. So when people execute PowerShell commands on the box, uh, it kind of gets logged and then sent to the cloud sim, which is Azure Sentinel. Uh, this box actually sends a lot of the system security logs as well to Azure Sentinel. So when somebody attempts to make a connection like via SMB or RDP, that actually gets logged to the sim as well. Sim or seem people will pronounce that differently, but that's like S-I-E-M. So basically it was online, exposed to the internet on purpose. And I set up some events in Azure Sentinel. So an alert would be triggered when three failed logon attempts occur, and then a successful attempt occurs to kind of indicate possibly that a brute, a successful brute force attack has, has occurred. And then all PowerShell logs and transcriptions get sent to the SIM as well. So basically I was able to detect the breach via the Azure Sentinel alert. Cause once, once the VM is live on the internet with RDP exposed within a couple hours, like people will be like attempting to log into it like pretty nonstop. And eventually like someone guessed the password. I made the password like not so so difficult to guess. So someone would guess it eventually. There are multiple failed logon attempts and then a successful logon attempt. This raised an event in the sim. And then from that point on, I was able to monitor and detect like several PowerShell commands being executed on uh, the system. My kind of role in this incident since I was it's my lab and I'm like the sole person there. So I guess you can say like I'm the incident commander and the rest of the technical staff since it's my lab. But basically the incident was addressed by just essentially resetting the admin passwords and taking the Azure VM offline, bringing it back online and running running malware scans to make sure there's no malware or anything dropped on the image that was existing after the fact. So I know it's like kind of weird to think about like, oh, I, I made a, you know, a VM and I like put it on the internet and I exposed it on purpose. So an incident would happen, but this is infinitely better than saying like, oh, I, I've never been involved in an incident. Because like, if you, if you talk about like NIST 861, you talk about like NIMS ICS and say you like took the course and then you kind of talk about the, you know, the NIST computer incident handling lifecycle, like the detection and, you know, eradication and recovery phases, this type of thing. And then you talk about how you like made an incident incident on purpose, like you honey potted somebody and you you watched what they did and you logged everything. It's way, way better than talking than not even like being able to say anything about it. Plus this this activity is like pretty interesting and, and uh, pretty fun to do. So I'll probably actually make a video on this uh, in the future because I think it's like really, really useful, especially for people don't ha who don't have any actual incident response or incident handling experience. So yeah, the first question was kind of long. So that's, I'm going to just like cut it for this one. And I'll, I'll continue in the next in the next video. So yeah, if you enjoy these, please like let me know in the comment section or, or like or please consider subscribing helps the channel out a lot. And if you have any like comments or criticism or anything like please leave comments, I definitely like 100% respond to everybody's comments. Um, I have a, a Patreon. If you need to like talk to me like more quickly you can subscribe to the Patreon and then I have like a, a discord associated with the cheapest tier. You don't have to do it because you know, I respond to comments anyways. But if you want to, you can um, I'll stop mentoring, uh, you can look at it in the comments. But yeah, otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.